the latest on the California earthquakes. Los Angeles, shaken by a 3.5, felt by over 1,500 people reporting it to USGS, and 3.1 five hours later at Ridgecrest, 2.5 following that. And uh, this is an area, of course, we know is a uh, on the San Andreas Fault. California, San Andreas is the largest fault line of the state. This is what lies under it, the Ridgecrest area, as you can see, the circle on the 9 o'clock position is exactly on the position of Ridgecrest. This is a map that was uh, given March, April of 2019. It was a couple of months before the Ridgecrest earthquakes, and that has the indication of the, man, ma the magma underneath that area. Ridgecrest is in the Coso volcanic field. There is a geothermal plant at that area, and this is one of the cracks that was made at the 7.1 July 5th earthquake in that area, exactly as you can see. Let's take a look at what's happening there. Taken by the 3.5 that we had today, this is the San Andreas Fault, as you can see very clearly right here. And this is inside of that area, is the parallel to that, is the Hayward Fault. And they meet somewhere around Salinas, around here, is where they join. This is where we have the garlic fault, the second largest fault in California. And here we have the Walker Lane fault system joining the garlic fault right here at Ridgecrest. This is a series of faults and this is where we have the high threat volcanoes of California as well. Walker Lane fault pushes into the Cascades area, the Cascades Arc, going northwest. The San Andreas takes the Set pressure from the subduction zone of the Pacific plate underneath the North American plate. 75% of the pressure is taken up by the San Andreas Fault and 25% is taken up by the Walker Lane Fault System. The geologists say that in a long time from now the earth changes will take place that we may fall off or be cut off and the Walker Lane will be the new coastline of the uh, continental United States to the west. And let's go to our map. This is Sizemore Berkeley. These are all the earthquakes today in the area. The Baja California position here has the, the magma chamber, the mantle plume actually, that goes into a Y shape. The western portion feeds the west coast volcanoes, and then it trunks over the Snake River Plain into Yellowstone and Wyoming, and that is where the remainder of the mantle plume goes and feeds Yellowstone as well. Let's take away the, the smaller ones, smaller earthquakes so we can see better, and we'll see everything over two and a half, two and a half magnitude, and this is just the past hour at uh, 10.39 a.m. PST, and this is five hours, about five hours before that. And we'll see the shake map. This is the shake map. This is Los Angeles right here, population density, as you can see. Let's take out the... Okay, the population, okay. The shake map contours. Stations, okay, take out the station, put in the, the population density. This is Ridgecrest right here. This is where we had the shaking as well. The five hours after that we had 3.1. So as you can see, the whole area of Los Angeles was shaken. I'm wondering if um, the shake alert was um, working properly enough to notify the people having that app uh, that the earthquake was coming. So this is where we have our San Andreas fault line and this is the Hayward fault and this is where they meet around Salinas and um, this is the makeup of the faults of the Walker Lane fault system as you can see this is all a number of, of faults 
working together. This area here is the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano. Now going back to the 3.5, up to a few minutes ago, about 1,500 people reported it to USGS that they had felt it. And this is the map of it right there, right around here, around the greater Los Angeles area. And it's about, what is it, 70 miles or so from Ridgecrest, 70 to 100 miles from Ridgecrest. Let's see. Miles from here to here. Yeah, about, about 100 miles or so from Ridgecrest, depending on. Okay, about 100 miles from Ridgecrest. So that's not too far away. Uh, but as you know, everything is locked. They're locked in with each other. The San Andreas is locked with the garlic. They've felt it and the garlic with uh, Walker Lane because of the fact that it's a series of faults releases pressure right there. Now we know we had um, a couple of days ago, we said that um, that's when we had the Bella Bella earthquake, they took it off. Okay, we had a, a um, 4.6 Bella Bella earthquake north of Vancouver Island. We also had this one um, in a couple of days back, 4.5, and this one I think was yesterday. Okay, again, 3.3. So you can see that we were, we were having pressure coming down towards San Andreas, towards California from the north, from the Cascadia area. And it was logical that we would have pressure breaking here as well because, you know, these earthquakes, these fault lines jolt each other from what the geologists have told us from their findings. They jolt each other. So this is normal activity. But, you know, the uh, from what Dr. Lucy Jones and other geologists told us after the Ridgecrest earthquakes, they are expecting a major earthquake on the southern portion, portion of the San Andreas Fault, which is around Los Angeles. So that's why the governor of Los Angeles, uh, going back a good couple of months, asked the residents of the area to get their Quake app so that they could be notified and that would give them a couple of seconds warning so that they can take shelter before the shaking would take place in their area. It works by GPS and the GPS knows where you're located and if the um, shake alert believes that you are an area that will be shaken it sends you an immediate uh, message so you have a good couple of seconds to um, take cover. It goes with the S&P waves uh, there are certain waves before the major shaking starts, and that's what they pick up in order to notify people. So this is what took place today. As you can see, the whole area was shaken. And uh, shake map intensity. Okay, that's just that quarter of it. Um, and uh, the other one having to do with the 3.1 in Ridgecrest. 16 people reported feeling that. As we know, it's not that populated. And let's go to the aerial. It doesn't have the shake map there, but that's okay. Let's go to the tectonics. There we go. Okay. And as you can see, uh, San Andreas here, right here, fault lines right here, and Ridgecrest right there. That's it. So all of you there, please be very careful. Be, please be alert because we do have quake swarms there, especially around Ridcrest, and this is what you have here. Salt and Buttes. And um, this is around the area of the geysers that's always having earthquakes. They have the biggest power uh, geothermal plant in the world there. And this is the area of Long Valley Caldera, Tom's Place, they have another geothermal plant there, and they have a geothermal plant in Ridgecrest as well. So you can see these three here, as I'm talking to you, the red are the past hour, the blue is the past day. Okay, this is the 3.1 that we were talking about. Yes, and uh, the smaller one on top of that. 
an hour later, and uh, the 1.1, 0 0.6, a little bit after that. So the red ones are the past hour. And this is, as we saw, we say, we saw, we said, sorry, the Kosovo volcanic field. This is the Kosovo volcanic field. And going in, you can see a beautiful lava. There it is up there. That is, um, it looks so, so fresh, fresh and clean. Okay. Okay, that's Volcano Peak. And as you can see, there's all types of cinder cones right there. Look at the profile, elevation profile. Okay. And the elevation profile here is just about that, that's that high. It's about um, 5,000 feet, so that's pretty high. And look how fresh it is. Okay, so that's the volcanic field, the cause of volcanic field, which is not too far, basically, from uh, Long Valley. Um, it's what? Let's go. Miles are about 137 miles. It's a little bit farther than what Los, Los Angeles is from Ridgecrest. Okay, so please be very careful there, and I'll leave links below for you. This is on USGS Maps from Sizemore Berkeley. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.